Hi there. My name's Cooler, but you can call me, uh, Cooler. What do they call you? I'm a pound puppy, and I'm so happy to be a part of your family. You see, for a long time, home was the nearest pound. And you know, it gets awfully lonely there. And I'm glad that I've got you to take care of me now. I'll be your best friend, forever and always. Since we're just getting to know each other, I thought that you'd like to know that I just love to be scratched behind my ears and kissed on my nose. Could you do that for me? Gee. You know something? I'm a pretty intelligent mutt. For one thing, I can talk. Bet you don't know many dogs who can do that. I'm completely housebroken. I always wipe my feet before coming into the house. And I don't have fleas. Do you? I know lots of stories. Would you like to hear one? Okay, okay, all you knucklehounds. Gather round and old Cooler here will tell you a tale. A dog's tale about the time it was almost curtains for me. It was a beautiful day and all us pound puppies were minding our own business. I was picking at the remains of an old T-bone steak from my favorite four-star garbage pail behind my favorite restaurant, La Pucci. My friend and yours, Scrounger, had just laid his paws on some of the finest filet mignon that ever graced my mangy lips. When all of a sudden, Bright Eyes cried out, Hey, all you pound puppies, it's that dizzy dog catcher, Dabney Nabbit. Sure enough, there he was, fleas and all, with his two evil-looking mutts, itchy and snitchy, showing their teeth and growling. Well, it was just about that time when I had the feeling that dinner was pretty much over. Okay, all you knucklehounds, time to vamoose, I shouted, and took off with Itchy and Snitchy snapping at my heels. Howler let out a yelp and jumped into the garbage pail. The nose hightailed it over to the park across the street. Barkerville just stood his ground and gave Itchy a good square shot on the snout with his cane. No running away for Barkerville. He didn't want to mess up his top hat and bow tie. I mean, if you're going to the pound... You might as well go in style. Nothing I respect more than a canine with class, you know. As for yours truly, I thought for sure I'd be taking a long vacation at the city pound again. I was running as fast as I could, and I could feel Snitchy's hot doggy breath on the back of my neck. Just then, I saw this truck pulling away from the curb. I leapt into the air and landed in the back with a bunch of empty egg crates. Boy, were Itchy and Snitchy mad, but not half as mad as their bozo boss Dabney Nabbit, who was yelling and screaming and shaking his fist at them for letting me get away. Oh, well, that's the breaks. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. You win a few, you lose a few. And I guess it was just my lucky day. I waved goodbye. Now, I'm not too sure what happened next. Maybe it was all the excitement but I must have fallen asleep in the back of the truck, because when I woke up and looked out of the back, I knew I wasn't in the city anymore. No buildings, no cars, no Dabney Nabbit, no Witchy or Snitchy. I think I would have stuck around to the end of the ride and taken the bus back or something, but I guess that fate was not smiling on me that day, because just then the truck hit this bump and I went flying out of the back along with a couple of egg crates. I landed smack in the middle of a haystack covered with broken eggs. Omelets, anyone? Lucky for me, it was a nice soft landing. I tell you, I didn't know how I was going to get back. But the way I had it figured, sitting up there on that haystack wasn't doing me a bit of good. And besides, it was making my nose itch and making me sneeze. Uh, uh... Ah, chew! Touch of hay fever, I guess. So I skedaddled from the haystack to find someone and ask them where I was and where I could get the subway back. I turned around and bingo, I was face to face with some kind of huge, ugly creature with two horns and a ring through his nose, snorting and pounding at the ground with his foot, getting ready to charge. I'm telling you, the word ugly was made for this guy. Why, he made Itchy and Snitchy look like Lassie and Rin Tin Tin. So I politely said, 
Hey, I'd love to stay and chat, but I'm late for an appointment and I gotta be on my way. With that, I turned around and started running as fast as I could towards the gate with this thing snorting and chasing me from behind. He had his head bent over and those horns of his aimed right for me. I thought to myself, this is it. I'm going to wind up a cooler kebab. I looked over my shoulder and he was gaining on me. Just then, I heard this barking and yelping. I turned around and saw this crazy pooch running in circles around that horned monster, nipping at his heels. I figured this dog's either one brave pooch or one crazy puppy. But the way I saw it, I wasn't going to stick around to find out. At least not until I was on the other side of the gate. I'm telling you, this dog had the moves. He was driving the creature crazy making it run around in circles till it got so dizzy it just collapsed in a heap. Then this dog came over to me and introduced himself as Barley. We shook paws, and I thanked him for helping me out of a tough spot. What is that thing with the horns, I asked him. And do you know what he said it was? That's right, a bull. Barley told me that I had to be half out of my mind for messing with a bull in the first place. To which I replied that under the circumstances, I didn't have much choice. I told him the whole story of how I got there, and where I came from, and about all my friends at the City Pound. Well, said Barley, I think we gotta find a way for you to get home. I heartily agreed, and asked if he had any bright ideas. He said to follow him, so he went into the back of the old barn. Barley told me that his owner was a farmer who twice a week brought his vegetables into the city to deliver them to the market. And that if I was real quiet, I could hide in the back of his pickup and kind of hitch a lift. Only problem was he wasn't leaving till the next morning, so I'd have to spend the night. No sweat. I could use a little vacation, I thought. So we grabbed some chow, fluffed up some straw, and bedded down for the night. Barley sang some country songs, like Get Along Little Doggy, and played the harmonica. Barley was a real country bumpkin, but he had a kind of charm about him that I kind of liked. I could tell that he was going to be a good friend. So we laid down our heads and tried to get some shut-eye. I tell you, no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't sleep. Somehow I could take the noise of fire engines... Police sirens, yelling, screaming, and barking, and sleep soundly as a newborn pup. But all those crickets and the quiet night were driving me crazy. So I got up to take a little walk around, figuring some of that fresh air would put me to sleep. You're not going to believe what happened next. But if you want to hear the rest of the story and a whole lot more, just pop out the cassette tape in my back and turn it over. But be careful... I'm a little ticklish back there. Okay, okay. So there I was, walking around the barn and thinking about all the guys back at the pound, wondering if they got away or if they were doing time courtesy of the city. Well, I was just about ready to fall asleep when I heard these voices coming from out of the barn. Somehow they sounded familiar to me, but I figured how could that be? So I quietly sneaked up and poked my head around the corner. And who do I see but those two dastardly villains, Flack and Tubbs? And I knew they were up to no good. They were in the stable kidnapping the farmer's prized thoroughbred horse. I didn't know what to do, but I knew I had to think fast. I went back and woke up Barley to tell him what was going on. He asked me if I had any ideas on how to stop them. So I had to do some quick thinking on my four feet. Sure enough, it hit me like a bolt of lightning. I whispered my plan to Barley, and we snuck back into the stable. I hid behind the wheelbarrow. Barley buried himself in the hay in the loft above. Ooh. I held quietly. Ooh. Just like a ghost. What was that? asked Tubbs. What was what? answered Flack. I didn't hear anything. Hurry up and get this stallion tied up. We'll sell him for a fortune. Ooh, went Barley from the hayloft. 
and he spoke in a ghostly voice. Flack and Tubbs, Tubbs and Flack, untie that horse and put him back. Well, those two banana brains turned white and started shaking like a leaf. They were so scared. Let's get out of here, screamed Tubbs. This place is haunted. For once I'm with you, Tubbs, let's move it. The two of them ran out of the barn so fast that they didn't look where they were going. And they ran right smack into the bull ring. Now, while that old bull is not my favorite friend, I have to admit I liked him a lot better after he booted Tubbs and Flack clear out of the ring and into the sky. It was a perfect hit. Guess they call it a bullseye. For all I know, they're still up there somewhere with Haley's Comet. Well, when they had gone, Barley laughed so hard he fell right out of the hayloft. After that, I slept like a baby. The next morning, I said goodbye to Barley and told him if he was ever in my neighborhood to drop by sometime. We shook paws again, and I hid in the back of the truck. A couple of hours later, I was back home. Those car horns were music to my ears. I jumped out of the back of the truck and headed straight for the city pound. I knocked on the gate and yelled for them to let me in. Sidney Bigelow, the pound supervisor, thought that old Cooler had finally flipped his wig and gone crazy. After all, a dog trying to get into the pound? What can I say? I miss my friends. Scrounger, Bockerville, Bright Eyes, Howler, and the Nose. In a weird kind of way, I even miss Dabney Nabbit and Itchy and Snitchy. I don't know what you're up to, Cooler, said Bigelow. But we've got you now and you're not going to escape this time. What could I say? It was great to be home. And so ends another chapter in the life of Cooler. Did you like that story? You know, telling stories is not the only thing I know how to do. I can sing, too. And I even do impressions of your favorite rock stars. My favorite songs are Ain't Nothing But a Pound Dog by Elvis Poodle and Born to Scratch by Bruce Springersteen. Here's one you might know. It's an old Beagle tune. I'm a pound puppy And I'm lonely as can be I'm a pound puppy And I'm looking for a family I'll sing your favorite songs for you Roll over and give you my paw And when you're sad and feeling blue I'll sing to you some more Oh, I'm a pound puppy And I'm gonna say it again I'm a pound puppy And I wanna be your best friend Who oh, I wanna be your best friend Woo! Pretty good, huh? I'm a regular Joe Cocker Spaniel. Do you have any favorite songs? Here's another one. You might know this one, even though I've changed the words a little bit. This pound puppy went to market. This pound puppy stayed home. This pound puppy had roast beef. This pound puppy had none. And this pound puppy went all the way home. Here's another one of my favorites. Old Mother Hubbard went to her cupboard to fetch a pound pup a bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare, and so her pound pup had none. Arr, arr. Here's a song I made up about Dabney Nabbit. Dabney Nabbit has grown so fat, he won't get up to feed the cat. So what can you all make of that lazy Dabney Nabbit? And here's one for my true love, Violet Vandefeller. Violet could eat no fat, and I could eat no lean. And so between us both, you see, 
We lick the platter clean. Of course, everyone can join in on this one. Oh, have you seen the dog catcher? The dog catcher? The dog catcher? Have you seen the dog catcher who's after all of us? Arr! Okay, now everybody together. Oh, have you seen the dog catcher? The dog catcher? The dog catcher? Have you seen the dog catcher who's after all of us? Arr! Well, this has been just great. And I know that I'm going to like it here. Because you're the best owner that any pound puppy could ever hope for. And I got a secret to tell you. But you've got to come closer. Even closer. I love you. Bye-bye for now. Roar, roar. <laughs>